Thank you very much. Elias Hostinger on the tenor saxophone. Ross Margitz on the piano. Dr. Ryan Hagler on the bass. And uh, please give uh, this next gentleman uh, a big old Austin, Texas welcome. He came here from New York City, Mr. Aaron Kimmel on the drums. It's a really special night for me. Um, uh, one, I haven't been playing that much. I have a one-year-old, and I'm not doing a lot of gigs right now, so I've been looking forward to this for a while. And two, um, me and Aaron, we came up kind of together in New York, and uh, and when I lived in New York, I, me and Aaron played a lot together, and since the pandemic, we haven't really played at all. So this is the first time we've played since 2019. So. Uh, I'm uh, really uh, glad to be playing with him, and I'm really glad that um, Austin Knights can hear uh, just what a force he is on the drums. And I'm going to be embarrassing him all night long. He doesn't like people to talk about how good he is. <laughs> but um, Aaron uh, is uh, a world-class uh, musician uh, and just happens to be a drummer. And uh, he is very, <laughs> very... <laughs> I did. I really did mean that as a compliment, man. And uh, and I'm just so glad he's here. And he, and um, I was trying to uh, apologize. Like, man, uh, we're getting some sort of cataclysmic heat right now. But he's like, no, it feels pretty good, man. It feels pretty good. Like, okay. So um, anyway, so uh, that was a song called "The Thing to Do," uh, composed by the great Jimmy Heath. And uh, we're going to now play a song composed by another great saxophonist. Uh, Charlie Parker, and we're going to play a song called Bloom Dito. Before we do that, we're going to bring up uh, a young man who uh, I met during the pandemic and relocated to uh, Austin uh, maybe a year or a year and a half ago, and he's a very, very talented alto saxophonist, and um, about a week ago I said, what are you doing uh, next Wednesday? Uh, if you want to come out and play a song with us? And he said, of course. So uh, we're going to invite up a young man, very, very, very talented for his age, uh, and it's going to be just an incredible force in jazz, I think. Uh, so put your hands together for Juan Lauder, everybody. <laughs>
Juan Laura, everybody, on the alto saxophone. All right. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you all. All right, we're going to bring up um, the owner of uh, Mom's Jazz Club. Put your hands together for Colin Shook, everybody. Thank you, thank you. One more time for this fantastic band. Um, thanks again, everyone, for coming out. Uh, it's very uh, much a special treat to have a sold-out house here on a Wednesday in the summer as school starting. Thank all of y'all for uh, helping to support tonight. Um, if this is your first time here and first time hearing about the Austin Jazz Society, um, we started working together way back in the summer of 2020. We started uh, an every Tuesday night concert series called Project Safety Net, which was sending out checks to all of us out-of-work musicians. A lot of people weren't teaching, weren't doing anything, gigging 25 nights a year, and all of a sudden, everywhere that they were playing, you just couldn't meet up, couldn't hang out. And so, excuse me, 25 nights a month, thank you. Um, 25 nights a month, that's what I meant to say. Uh, and um, yeah, with the Austin Jazz Society and their mission in our live streams every Tuesday night, of course there was a lot of other large donors and everything, but together we were able to raise over $142,000 for local Austin musicians out of work. Let's do it again tonight. Let's do it again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when the world opened back up and um, everyone was able to start playing again, we had uh, moved into this space. We were cooking with, you know, we do about three or four or five shows here every week. But uh, we took some time off and we decided to come up with a new project every other week instead of every week. And uh, thus, Midweek at Monks was born. And we're just over a year into this bi-weekly series featuring tons of local um, Austin cats. So tonight is a fundraiser. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about the Austin Jazz Society, you can go to austinjazzsociety.org, and that goes for y'all out on the stream as well. Um, they do monthly series over at a restaurant on the northwest side of town and a lot of other cool projects. Um, and for this Midweek at Monks series, to be recognized as a sponsor, you can leave $100 or more, or as a supporter, you can leave $50 or more. Um, and anybody in the house tonight, you can come meet me at the counter and just top up from, you know, the tickets you've already purchased. But if you're tuning in online, we do appreciate your support. If you guys could please put your hands together for uh, supporters we have tonight so far, Mary Smith and Lauren Michael. Thank you all so much for helping to support. And uh, what you got up next, Mike? Some more jazz, Colin. Some Thank you. Jazz. All right. Colin Shook, everybody. Um, I just wanted to say something about the Austin Jazz Society real quick. Um, I, um, I mean, gosh, it's like 2020 seems like decades ago. Um, but <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. And um, I've lived in a bunch of different places, and they've all had jazz societies. And uh, the Austin Jazz Society is not the typical jazz society in that um, the, the money that they have, they give it to jazz musicians which is like pretty novel concepts um, that you think would be a natural thing uh, that jazz societies would do, but um, yeah, it's not, in my experience, uh, it's sort of hard to get the money from the jazz societies. Um, so, uh, you know, they were putting a lot of money in people's hands um, during the pandemic, and um, uh, and, and these shows and uh, over at Shay Z once a month, actually uh, this band minus uh, Aaron, it, we're doing something in the new year over there and they do a lot and um, yeah, I just I'm grateful for them so please put your hands together for the, for the Austin Jazz Society because um, yeah they could just sit on the money I, they, but they don't, I mean it's like it's, you know, they could just sit on it but they don't so uh, thank you for giving it to jazz musicians. All right, so uh, we're going to continue on now with a Ray Bryant composition. Uh, this is entitled Cubano Chant.
Thank you, Aaron Kimmel on the drums. Thank you for being there. All right, we've got two more for you. We're gonna slow it down now, and um, we're gonna play a ballad, uh, a beautiful ballad that was composed by our tenor saxophonist, Elias Hoslinger. And um, he wrote, there's a great story behind this that I, that I don't want him to tell because he tells it every single time I play it with him. And he's probably sick of hearing it, and y'all have probably all heard it. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we are. <laughs> um, it's a good story. It's a good story. It is a good story, but even if, even if he just wrote this for nobody, it still would be a great song. Like, the, the circumstance has nothing to do with the fact that it's just a great song. And, um, and when I first moved back to town, I was going a lot to the Continental Gallery on Mondays. Who's been to see Elias uh, at the Continental Gallery on Mondays? So he has a 13-year residency there? Not quite. Ten. Ten years. Ten, okay, all right. I hope I didn't just jinx it right there. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they, he plays the song a lot there, and um, I, it's one of those songs, like, the first time I heard it, I just knew it. It's like, fit right under my fingers, like, man, I just... One of the songs, like, I, I just I knew it. And the next time we played together, he called it, and I just like I just had it right there. I just knew it, and uh, so I really like playing this song, and I like listening to him play this song. So, we're gonna play Elias Hostinger's song for being there. Here we go.
Sausager, everybody. Ryan Hager on the bass. All right, we're going to invite our host up one last time. Please keep your hands together for Colin Shook, everybody. Thanks again, everyone, for coming out. Um, please put your hands together once more for the Austin Jazz Society for helping to support this Midweek at Monks series. Um, we have a lot of cool shows coming up, uh, and I'd also like to thank the supporters we have tonight. If you put your hands together for Lauren, Michael, and Mary Smith for their unending support here. Um, we have two more shows this week. We usually have about four or five every week, but this week we only have three. We have some other events and things going on. Here, uh, Friday night, we have the Gil Del Bosque uh, Quartet. Uh, that show is sold out, so if you're staying home Friday night, please tune in online. Um, but then on Saturday night, Jerry Gibbs, a fantastic yeah. drummer living in the San Antonio area, he's been coming up more and more to play. He's got uh, more like fusion, future jazz projects called Jerry Gibbs and the Aliens. Um, an old uh, friend, uh, Carter Arrington, is back yeah. in town from his time in the UK, and he'll be on there, as well as some other fantastic musicians. So please do come join us on Saturday night. And one more time, um, give it up for these fantastic musicians. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to play one last song for you all, and... Um, it's a song that if you hang out in New York long enough, you'll eventually learn it. A lot of people play this song. It's called Saucer Eyes. Somebody just introduce this band one last time. On the piano, Ross Margitza. Yeah. <laughs> Elias Hosner on the tenor saxophone. Ryan Hager on the double bass. Visiting from New York City, Aaron Kimmel on the drums. My name is Mike Sailors. Thank you, Monks, for having us. Thank you, Austin Jazz Society. Mike Sailors! Mike Sailors!
Thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thank you.